just going to make sure that I can see you guys. There we go. Happy Sunday, guys. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, six minutes late. I just uh, needed to make sure I was ready for this before we, uh, we began. And uh, thank you. Special shout out to Leah for correcting me on my story on Instagram. I put I put out 2 p.m. as opposed to 12 p.m. Force of habit, I guess, because we've been doing 2 p.m. for so long. Hi, Patty. So my apologies for those who um, saw that. And thank you, Leah, for being on the ball about that. Um, Yes, so today is the last Sunday for uh, our live, well, for the year, and until the new year, then we'll do, we'll do more stuff. So today's the last Sunday. Hi, Jill. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Leah. Hi, Cindy. Okay, all the heavy hitters are rolling in. Okay, so, um, yeah, so today's the last Sunday for a Sunday live, for our Sunday lives on YouTube. I'm going to take a little bit of time off to kind of just recuperate, enjoy the holidays, come back in the new year with some more fun stuff for you guys, and we pick up where we left off. So um, for everyone who was able to join in today, thank you for joining in. I really appreciate the time you guys spend with me. Hi, Alia. And uh, hi, Laura. Okay, so I'm going to switch my camera and really quickly talk about a couple of things before I unveil what we're doing for today. I hope you guys are excited. Hi, Gail. Okay, let me just switch back here and make sure that I'm switching my screen. Uh, so for those of you who have been following along uh, on social media, you guys know about my holiday challenge that's been happening started in November however this is something that's open you can do it at any time of the year my hard work with all those 10 videos it's not going to just fuzz like fade off in after just one month so that's always there for you guys so you can um, check that out if you're ready to create your own Christmas stuff this was the final challenge and uh, the bonus challenge is coming out on Monday and then Thursday is when I'm going to be announcing the winners for a ton of giveaways from some of our really amazingly generous sponsors. So this was a really cute little thing that we did to end things off. If you missed this week's video on YouTube, we did a cute little starry night. This wasn't it, because I'm just noticing it's pink, but this was definitely um, a trial version of the uh, one in the video so if you've not checked that YouTube video out go and check it out when you get a chance and it's done on the etcher postcard which is super simple paint and then ship or no mail not ship and finally for the um, for the what should we call it for the bonus of the holiday challenge I'm doing a bunch of Cricut things so we've done the Cricut flowers uh, for the video that's coming out on Monday so these were the Cricut flowers and I'm definitely going to be putting out this little nativity scene as well. And here's the idea. I made a cute little um, tray out of it. And, you know, something cute for the holiday season, right? So that's that. We're moving on to what we're doing today. So today, this is what we're doing. So as I'm talking to you guys a little bit, feel free to go and find a circular object and just do a quick trace and I'll allow you guys to catch up with me once we're caught up we're gonna start and let me just read the comments to see if anyone is saying anything at this time uh, oh people are just talking amongst themselves so that's great okay so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of time to kind of go ahead draw tree tree three circles do the little so we're doing baubles obviously do the little top bit for it. I'm actually going to modify this one just a tad bit. And then we are going to start. So you can place it however you feel works best for you. So use your own creativity in terms of placement. 
I prefer to have one overlapping here and then a smaller one kind of just above not touching either of the two. And I'm just widening this guy here. And they're all slightly different. But again, very rough idea of the circle so we know what spacing we're working with. And uh, yeah, Christine, welcome back. It's been forever, girlfriend. Um, yeah, Cindy, these are gonna be fun today. Okay, so while you guys are getting uh, this um, drawing in really quickly, this base drawing, I'm just gonna walk you through what I am using today. And as you guys finish doing your base drawing, just let me know in the comments that you're done. So this way I know exactly where we're at. So for brushes, I'm using uh, my Silver Black Velvet number four, number eight, and then I'm also gonna keep the Princeton number six handy. For my colors, I'm using my White Knights, the 36, the set of 36, which is right here. Oh, gosh, try to open it. And I'm just gonna keep that handy on the side. You guys will see my palette. I think that's the most important part, so you can watch me um, you can watch me mix it or whatever. It's my phone cover on the other side. Okay, so we've got the palette. We've got this. Uh, yes, and I have my colors by Metallics by KMS, which I can't seem to stop using recently, especially for the holiday season. I think they're so perfect. So I'm just keeping all of them available and handy to me. And as I, whatever I choose to use, I will definitely let you know as we go along. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna start. I am going to use the number eight. Yes, I'm gonna use the number eight and what we're gonna do first thing is we're going to go ahead and give our baubles a shadow, okay? So I'm using my number eight, I'm getting some water. Oh, I've got water on the side and I also have my paper towel handy. So just make sure you have that in case you need to dab away at excess water collecting on your sheet, all right? Okay, so getting some water just off the, uh, on my number eight. I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly dampen the right side of my top bauble here. And what I'm gonna do is make sure that I am nicely uh, outlining this overlapping bauble and I do not want the water to go across that. And I'll show you why in a bit. Okay, so I've just done a very light like arc on this side as well. Now I'm gonna go in and get some of my uh, which one call it? Uh, Payne's gray, and I am getting this Payne's gray, and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this little swipe, and a swipe this way as well. And notice that I did the swipe inside the dampened area. I didn't go to the edge over here. I'm allowing the color to just kind of smoosh, swoosh its way out there. I'll do one more over here on this side before it sort of damp, uh, dries off, kind of did already because this is not 100% cotton. And then I'm using the number four and I'm just going ahead and swishing the color around to give it more of a bleed or a blend. Okay, so I'm just taking the number four and just lightly moving the color around. using just water on my brush. And this edge, I want it to be perfect, like, and you'll see why later on. And I'm just sweeping off some of the gray just to kind of have a nice variation or a gradient almost going from light to dark on the outside. Okay, and then what I'll do is using the number four, I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more sweep. 
with a little bit of gray on that area and then one more on this area. And then just some below at the bottom over here. Okay, now I'm gonna allow this to dry just a bit. And we're gonna move on and do this one on the side here. Again, the same thing uh, that we did for this little bauble here. So I'm gonna dampen this area. Actually, for this one, we're going to make, we're gonna have a pattern obviously on this guy here. But for this one, let's make it a solid color. And we'll use the similar technique that we've used here so we can get some nice flares of color. So I'm gonna use the number eight and I'm gonna go ahead and make this bauble like a nice turquoisey color. And uh, so what I'll do is dampening the area first. I am outlining and adding some water. And really pressing the belly of my brush down so that I can quickly get this area dampened and then adding a little bit on this side and there's just like one swoop in the center so now it's completely dampened and I'm gonna go ahead and get my turquoise I've got this really beautiful turquoise happening by white knights and I'm just gonna go ahead and do this And then using the number four, I'm actually, before I do the number four, oh no, it's dried up already. I need to dampen this area some more. Yeah, that's the thing about using Canson here because it dries up quickly. And then going with the number four, I'm just gonna go ahead, just water and just swoosh this paint around. And I want to leave a little bit of white space in there just to kind of have the indication of a glisten. Glistening Christmas baubles. And then I'm going to go ahead and get some of the blue. I'm not washing off my brush. I'm just getting some of the blue on my brush. Or even indigo I think would work. And I just want to add a little bit of a shadow. So this is like a dark shadow just on the edge of this bauble. And then I'm just going to extend this shadow bit over on this end at the like at the very top, just like we did there. And then I want to do a little bit here. Oh my gosh, I got some color here. I'm gonna fix that later. Okay, so just making sure that I got this color in there nicely. So I can see this nice little blend of blue happening here. And I think it's really pretty with the turquoise. And something different, especially if we're gonna go with reds and greens for our other two baubles. I think it'll be a nice contrast and a nice pop of color. For sure. Okay, I'm just gonna add, using the number four, I'm just going to swish some more of this color here. So we can get a nicer blend. Perfect, so I'm gonna leave that as is. And really quickly, we're gonna wash off the number four. We're gonna get, we're gonna get some of, you can either use black or use Payne's Gray. Um, I'm just mixing some of the black with my Payne's Gray. And what I'm also going to do is I'll get some of the, or you can use actually any of your metallic colors. I'm gonna get some of the Silhouette color, which is like a glittery gray. Um, yeah. This is like a nice little glittery gray and I'm going to mix that in here and we're going to quickly do the top areas of our little bubbles. 
And so I've quick, I've roughly outlined this and all I'm going to do is just outline color this in and doing quick little lines to kind of indicate the pattern on them. And then do our little curve bit at the top. Just using the tip of the brush, that's how you get that. Notice the thick and thin lines that I have going on over there. Uh, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in so you guys can see better. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And then, so carrying on, we're doing the same thing for this guy too. This guy's pretty big actually. Just really roughly painting this in, adding some nice thick and thin areas for these little lines that are a pattern on the top part. Trying to keep it loose and not very precise with these areas and then just adding in that little curve where the string or the um, or the ribbon goes. So get a little bit extra black and highlight some of these areas here so that it looks like shadow. Nice little light and dark bits stand out. And then we're going to do the same thing for this one here. Just keep it ready. So what I'm typically doing is adding a couple of strokes in the beginning and then just kind of painting the rest in to kind of give it that nice loose look as opposed to going really in there and neatly spacing out the lines and whatnot. And I'm also leaving white space in there, if you can see that. Oh, forgot to do the, the little curve at the top. Give me one second. Paint that in. And then for the rest, uh, the extensions for what's holding it up, we can either do make it a ribbon or just string. I think I'll just leave that till the end and we'll see what looks good. But for now, this is where we're at. Uh, so we've done this one. I'm going to go ahead and paint this. So we're going to do stripes on this guy here. And let's do... Uh, I'm going to use the number eight that we have and feel free to use a smaller brush if you feel like you are going to get this too thick and we're going to use let's see so we've got a nice turquoise I think if we use hmm let's use orange because I think it'll complement this really well so for orange I'm going to use the a mixture of the uh, Titan Red and Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna can be for the shadowy bits on the side and Titan Red can just be for the for our little stripes. So I'm going to get some of the Titan Red. Feel free to use any other color that you would like guys. I'm just going to use this one because I like this. Oh, I'll use the number four to use the Burnt Sienna bit on the edges. So you know what? Let me just keep that ready so that I'm immediately ready to go into the sides and add that in. So I'll start off from the top. Just dipping the tip of my brush in water. And then 
just adding a little bit of a dab to the side. Doing the same thing again. Notice I'm not trying to be precise or perfect in my little lines here again, or the stripes rather. I'm literally just going in and roughly adding color. I'm just dabbing this darker hue on the extreme edge of this. You know what, as we're going lower, I don't mind using like a slightly, mixing a little bit of golden into this just to get another hue happening. I like a rainbow of colors. Actually, yeah, you could have used like a bunch of different colors for this too, which give you like a really nice bauble. And I'll keep that ready with more burnt sienna. Going back in, getting some more orangey bits onto my brush. And we are continuing. And then again with the burnt sienna. And I love seeing the color just like run into each other and give you this pretty blend that you normally wouldn't get if you were using just one color. I mean, you could, I guess, if you kind of shifted around the variations of water consistency, water to color consistency. Just gonna make sure that I am very meticulous about how this orange ends off so it doesn't overlap on our main guy here. Here's more to the edge. And we're really gonna go extra on the edge over here because it is over, it is behind this guy here. So there's a little bit of shadow happening. One more down here. And I think we need one more below this one and then we are done. I'm just adding a little more thickness to some of these guys. Adding the burnt sienna to the edges again. And then finally, one last one. And then again, burnt sienna for the last time. Okay, so I think this is good. We are now going to move on to this guy right here. And I'm gonna figure out something to to cover these guys up once we're finished. Maybe shadow or, let's see, bouquet possibly. All right, so for this one, for those of you who've watched my videos from last year, Christmas time, holiday time, we did a bauble, which apparently I think went on a mini viral kind of thing, because so many people really loved that bauble and it was, we just, we kind of, it was like a transparent background and it was just intricate little, um, I guess, holly leaves and a bunch of other things. So we're gonna do something similar. But 
we're going to use a mixture of regular paints and metallics for this. So the first thing I want to do for this is we're going to leave it transparent as per usual, but we have our outline so we know exactly how we're going to be doing our uh, intricate pattern. So for this, I'm going to use a mixture of, so we're going to do green first. So that's where we're going to lay down our nice little flowy leaves. I got some water on here. Great. And so for that, I'm going to use the green from just the green. It's called green uh, from White Nights. And I'm mixing it with some yellowish green that I had on my palette. So feel free to use your favorite green for this and we are just going to have fun creating this really whimsical flowy pattern on here okay so i'm going to start off with the edges so that they are nice and perfect and then we're going to go um, work our way on the inside because i think our main thing is we want to make sure we've got the perfect edge so let's work with that first so you can start off, I think I'll do, I'll do a swirl here. And we're gonna start uh, adding little branches that kind of go out. Now feel free to use your metallics for these. If you guys would like to. But literally we're creating a bunch of little twigs that give the impression of nice twirling and swirling and we are going to go ahead and add these little tiny leaves on them. So literally at this point what you're doing is you're edging you're adding this cute little edge to your, you're painting the leaves in the shape of the edge. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. And for little gaps like that, don't worry, we'll, we'll figure out something else to kind of put in there because I don't want all the edges to look like it's just leaves around the edges, then it's gonna look a little bit too, um, what's the word, orchestrated? planned out yeah too fake ish a little bit not as loose and here we go adding some more leaves and if you've got a variation of sizing for the leaves that would be great uh, at this point they're starting to look like vines almost kind of just trailing around if you want to have different variations of the green for the different vines that we put on here, that's also a good idea. A good variation of uh, color, size. Um, I think that always helps boost up the energy of a painting. So same thing here. Let's do one. Uh, let's do a branch. Actually, let's just do this branch here and then we'll move on to another one because honestly guys you can just keep on creating these over and over it's so like it's almost like a therapeutic thing once you start you just kind of zone out and you're just going with the flow There's one more. And so I think for this one, I'll do one coming downward. Like one leaf, that 
this. And then I'll just do another one on this side. And I'll just do one that is not attached to anything. So like, like it's just kind of protruding from the top there. Okay, so we've got this coming from the top. I'll do one coming from the bottom going up this way. And so let me just get a little bit more color for that. So now we're gonna start, uh, you can do an S. Yeah, why not? You can do like a little bit of an S for those struggling with trying to figure out how to create movement. So, okay, this is not a very emphasized S. It's a very slight S, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, and I'll do a extension right here. Let's do one this way. So again, you see how I'm trying to kind of curve around around the um, the circle. That is what I'm trying to do. And uh, let's see. So we've got one there here. And I think now we can just start painting the leaves. So I'm just doing one on this side. I'll do one. It almost, it can look like it's almost coming from the bottom. So it's just half of it there. Then let's do one sort of going upward here. That's a Low happening with more extended leaves on this side. And again, remember I was talking about making sure that if you want different variety of sizing, so here's a tiny leaf in there. I think that really, really helps emphasize things. I'm doing another leaf, just peeking at the bottom there. Yeah, go with the flow, guys. I'm definitely flowing at this point. Um, do not, uh, like I, I, I encourage you guys to use your creative freedom and thought process to place things as and where you see fit. This is the whole idea of painting. Like you just go with the flow. It's not supposed to stress you out in terms of, oh, she put it there. I have to also create something exactly the same. No, you do not. Um, I, I feel like that takes away the joy of creating something that's your own when you're trying to mimic something to the T. I'm just giving you ideas. Run with these ideas and allow yourself to just go with the flow, is my saying. <laughs> I like the idea of adding little twirls, just like here and here, uh, tendrils, I guess we call them during the summer, yeah. Adding some in here as well. One without any extension, just like we did that at the top there. Oh, uh, Gail, K 
KMS has restocked, so you can absolutely go back and get more. And in fact, she even has like the little tin uh, version of of the palette, or if you just prefer getting the uh, getting this version, I, I think the sample version that also works. Like this is a lot of color, guys, and I've used it quite a bit this this time around. So. Should definitely check it and I think she even had it on sale for Black Friday on sale okay just let's try and speed this up a bit so we're not just Okay, so what I want to do is instead of uh, filling everything up with green, I want to do the green, but I then want to go in and leave some areas so we can go in with the metallics, okay? So I'm just going to do a little bit more of the green coming from the top, otherwise it's just going to look like um, the bunch here and then it's kind of ends really weird. So I'm just going to do some green here. So now we've got three little areas of green. I drew, I painted this little guy again so it can kind of go along the curve. Okay, so now that we've got all this green happening, we're gonna go ahead and get the metallics in there. Okay, so for the metallic bits, I think I really like how the dark green looks. I want to go ahead and add some of these guys in here. So I'm going to use my champagne, which is like my absolute favorite by uh, KMS. So feel free to either use the gold right away or champagne, bronze, whatever you have, or go ahead and use something like a colored metallic if you want, because what we're also going to do is little tiny dots. We need to be doing dots at some point, but I want there to be a nice array of different uh, colors and such. And again, I'm just going to keep this simple. We're using the same pattern. We're just using a different um, kind of color, or I guess we're using metallics in this case. And if you want to make it more protruding or maybe round the leaves as opposed to keeping them uh, pointy edged, then you can again do that as a variation. And you can like once again just get lost in painting this and creating your own little composition here so look at that uh, the honestly the video doesn't do this justice but the green with this champagne color is just divine like it's stunning i'm gonna do a layer bit coming out this way 
and I'll leave the little curve or curl at the edge at the end and I'll have one kind of going in between the green here and then one coming out on the other side so that doesn't look like it's alone Here's another leaf. Here's another one. Yeah, so I'm doing a little bit of edging right now by adding some tiny leaves around the edge. And then I'm just doing another one here at the top, even though technically I could have just left it alone. Just because the curl is right there but it's fine. I wanted to add it in there. So we've got one, two, three. Uh, would be nice to have some over here in between as well. Protruding from there. Okay, that's good. And I think we can definitely do some over here. And I'll have an extension just like I do have one here, possibly coming from this guy here. Let's do that. That's pretty, yep. And we even just have one coming out from here. So it looks like they're kind of mixed in. Okay, so just this bit here, and then I think we can go ahead and add some cute little dots and red bits and really make it very Christmassy looking. Um, okay, so we've got this. Oops. Oh, I didn't realize my hand was over this. Okay, I got a lot to fix, guys. <laughs> Hope you guys didn't do this either. I mean, like me. Okay, so we've got here, here, here. Let's do... Let's do that. This is coming from there and I'm going to try and do some tinier looking leaves here. One there, another one at the bottom on that end. Let 
and I'll make this a curve as well or a twirl whatever you want to call it okay so I think I think this is good enough uh, the only thing I will do is just maybe here and there I'll just add a little bit of like here's another peeking leaf I guess which is gold um, possibly some over here and just have it going under the green There we go, and I think now we are ready to move on to doing some of the other bits. Okay, so before we move on to doing the other bits, because we've got some green on the sides like this, I want to do just a little bit of green over here that's just for my peace of mind. So like one leaf coming out on this side. And then you remember those stray leaves that we have without really any, uh, what's the word, branches. Here's one at the top. And then I'm going to do one over here as well. And then I'll just do one peeking out from here too. I'm just giving slight areas around this around our little bobble to kind of accentuate the shape and just make it pop just a little bit more um, as opposed to losing out on on it because of the white space and whatever now this guy looks lonely so I'm going to add another one here All right, perfect. So no more to this. We're going right into the reds. We're already at 12.54. And I'm going to use this red by KMS. Feel free to use whatever red you have. This one's called uh, ooh, San Santa something. No, no. What? Strawberry. My gosh, guys. Okay, so getting some strawberry and I am going to get some tiny little berry kind of dots in here. And let's see, we could just get some, space them out. Space them where you feel it'll work for you. This is such a pretty red, I love this. I'm placing some at the edge as well, just to kind of hug the curve. really nice pop with the red I just gotta add a couple more here and there 
Oh, adding some at the top there. Remember I said we'll get back to areas like that where they're really tiny and you don't know what to do. This is my solution. Get some red over here. All we're doing is dots. That's literally it. And like I like to say for the fashionistas, you know how like in fashion polka dots, stripes never go out of style. And I feel like it's pretty much similar with artwork too. Like you cannot go wrong by adding a little splatter, which can be your polka dots or stripes. Adding some here and there, and I think we're almost done this. I don't think we need to do any more. Let's do some in this corner here. Okay. I think this is good. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and add the little strings. Now I really like how this looks because it's like so many different colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the strings strings as opposed to using it and painting in little um, ribbons. So again, we can, you can, you know what? I'm gonna do a combination of both. I'm gonna make this one a black ribbon. So I'm changing my mind. So we're using the number four and I'm going to paint in this very skewed rough pencil drawing. And then I'm gonna go in and add some, so I'm da just dampening it with water right now. And then I'm going in and adding some black. So I'm gonna get some of the black. And I'm just going to allow this black to run all the way up. And then start some from the top as well and push that down so it can meet the black running from the down, from down up, from the down. Oh my gosh. And I want the nice darks and lights and little flare ups of, you know, color bursting in there. I feel like it just adds something nice to the painting. Maybe even make it look like a, uh, they have those raw, um, velvet velvet ribbons that kind of look like they've just been roughly cut out. I think those are really in, right, for Christmas ornaments. I like that look. Try to achieve it in my paintings, if not real life ornaments. Just enhancing the darkness at the bottom here, pushing it upward into this color, damp area, and just adding some at the top as well. Perfect, and I like that. So I really love how the black jumps out at you. And we're gonna do um, a nice bronze or actually even silver. You know what? I'm going to do silver. We're going to do the platinum, sorry, diamond. Platinum is this color right there. I'll do the diamond for this guy. And here it is. 
Again, I wish I could zoom in a bit more, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, try and take some pictures that can show you guys how pretty this contrast looks with the, with the regular watercolor and the glitter. <clears throat> and I'll be posting in my stories on Instagram and, um, yeah, so feel free to check that out there and I'll definitely post it at some point as a post as well. Uh, but yes, trust me when I say it looks good. And because I have like the shadowy effect here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Tin Man, which is like a dark grayish silver. And we're going to use this to highlight the shadow bits, which is right here. And still keeping with our silver theme or glitter theme. Yeah, Tin Man's a nice color too. So I'm just dabbing at the edges, so at the edge at the top and then the edge here at the bottom because I want it to be the darkest here and then like phasing or fading off into lighter and then getting darker again so that's that and uh, for this guy I think it'll be nice if we can just do like regular just outlining that as a regular string but I'll make it bronze so I'm going to use some of the bronze to draw this string in but let me turn it upside down because these guys are still fairly damp and here we go so literally barely pressing down on the tip of my number four i'm just tracing my pencil drawing And that's that. Okay, and so that is it. Um, I will fix these and I will be posting time lapses of how I fix these on my Instagram so you guys can definitely check that out. But this is the final, final for it. Um, I know I set the filbert handy because I thought maybe we could go in and do some flowers, but once I started doing the leaves, I just, I loved how it looked and I didn't want to overcomplicate things. So we didn't end up using the filbert, but this is it guys. So go out there and make your own and I can't wait to see what you guys do. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Uh, tag me in your work, send it to me. I'm going to quickly check the comments here to see if anyone had any questions or anything to say okay I think I answered uh, Gail's question oh Patty had to leave bye Patty thank you Laura uh, that's why this is a video guys if I was too fast just you know when the replay is available just pause and do it at your own pace and you should be totally fine um, Hi, Secret Star DR. Uh, Gail, I can just text it to you on Instagram, direct message if you want. Just send me a message. Um, okay, I don't think anyone really had any other questions besides this. So I will love you guys and leave you guys and see you in the new year. Uh, this is it. Uh, December workshops i am having a workshop for a nice little christmas town so if you guys are interested you should check it out and you can sign up uh for it just check out instagram or check out my website or check out uh the community here outside of that i'm wishing you all a very very lovely holiday time with your friends and family loved ones everybody please guys take the time to put your busyness aside and just 
appreciate the people in your lives appreciate the things that you see every day and just it becomes so much of a habit that you don't it doesn't stand out as much anymore so when you're intentional to appreciate things people opportunities it just makes you realize how much you're blessed with and you just kind of keep going up right like so appreciate that guys and take take that extra moment to focus in and that's what I'm definitely going to be doing and uh, definitely will be reeling in for the new year with some really really good stuff for you guys so looking forward to seeing you all again and um, doing it in the new year all right guys we'll chat soon bye